What's up, guys? <clears throat> How are we all doing? All right, so who here knows how to meal prep? And who doesn't? Well, you think about that. Let me uh, let me start with the article. <clears throat> so, whoever doesn't know what meal prepping is, um, meal prepping is the concept of preparing whole meals or dishes ahead of schedule. Karen, Michelle, you do. I know you do. What are some tips that you can give people here? It's particularly popular amongst busy people because it can save a lot of time. Having pre-prepared meals on hand can also reduce portion size and help you reach your nutrition goals. This way you'll avoid unhealthy options like TV dinners or takeout, especially when you're overwhelmed or exhausted. Meal prepping is one of the, uh, if you want to lose weight and you want to be healthier, this is one of the, this is one of the <clears throat> most important things that you have to get down in order for you to make changes in your life. So that's why I'm going over this article today. Since it requires you to de determine what to eat ahead of time, meal prepping can lead to more nutritious meal choices over a long-term period. Despite what people may think, there are various ways to meal prep, not of all which involve spending a whole Sunday afternoon cooking dishes for weeks to come. You can choose what methods work best for you, which is very important. This article explains or explores the most important principles of meal prepping. It breaks down the process into a few, few simple steps. So different ways to meal prep. You may think that cooking meals for the week ahead will consume a big chunk of your weekend. However, because there are various ways to meal prep, you don't have to stay in the kitchen for an entire Sunday afternoon. Everyone can find a suitable meal preparation style. The most popular ways to meal prep include uh, making meals ahead of time, full meals cooked in advance, which can be refrigerated and reheated at meal times. This is particularly handy for dinner time meals. Batch cooking. Making large batches of a specific recipe and then splitting into individual portions to be frozen and eaten over the next few months. Um, these make for a popular warm, warm lunch or dinner options. Individually portioned meals. Preparing fresh meals and portioning them into individual grab and go portions to be refrigerated and eaten over the next few days. This is particularly handy for quick lunches. So that would be something like uh, if anybody's had those um, protein balls with like oatmeal, all that stuff. How do you make them, Karen? They're really, really good. Uh, and then ready to cook ingredients. 
prepping the ingredients required for a specific meal ahead of time as a way to cut down on cooking time in the kitchen. The method that will work best for you depends on your goals and your daily routine. For instance, make ahead breakfasts might work best if you're looking to streamline your morning routine. On the other hand, keeping batch cooked meals in your freezer is particu particularly handy for those who have limited time in the evenings. The different meal prepping methods that can also be mixed and matched depending on your own circumstances. Start by choosing the most appealing method, then slowly experimenting with the others to determine what suits you best. So take your time. Share the recipe, please, oh please. Yeah, Karen, share it. If you put it in the comments, that'd be great. So the summary of what we just talked about, there are many ways to meal prep depending on your goals, schedule, and meal preferences. Some options include making lar large batches to be frozen, full meals to be refrigerated, and separate portions to be com combined as you see fit. The next step is to pick the right number and the variety of meals that you're doing. Figuring out how many meals to make and what to include in each meal can sometimes be tricky. The best way to plan ahead is to first decide on which meals you'd like to focus and which meal prepping method fits your lifestyle. Then check your calendar to decide the number of breakfasts, <laughs> breakfasts, lunches, and dinners you'll need for the upcoming week. Also remember to account for times you're you are likely to eat out. For instance, on dates, at brunch with friends, or at uh, client dinners. When selecting which meals to make, it's best to start with a li limited number of recipes that you already know. This will ease your transition into meal planning. That said, it's also important to avoid picking only one recipe for the whole week. This lack of variety can lead to boredom and won't provide your body with the nutrients it needs. Instead, try picking meals that contain different vegetables and protein-rich foods, as well as varied complex carbs such as brown rice, quinoa, or sweet potatoes. Integrating a vegetarian or vegan meal into the mix is another way to add variety. Some tips to cut, cut down on cooking time. Um, number one, stick to a consistent schedule. Consist consistency is huge when it comes to meal prep. Um, and forming a habit. So the more consistent and the, obviously the more consistent you are, the more likely you are to build a habit, which will lead to um, actually sticking with meal prepping. Meal prepping works best when you stick to a regular schedule. Knowing, exa knowing exactly when you'll shop for groceries and prep your meals will help you form a good routine. For instance, you might reserve Sunday mornings for grocery shopping and meal prepping. Or you could select Monday evenings for making lunches for the rest of the week. The schedule is up to you and should fit your, uh, and should fit your weekly routine. Keep in mind that picking specific times and sticking to them will simplify the decision-making process, freeing up mental space for other things. I posted the recipe on the burn page. Well, thank you.
Number two, pick the right combination of recipes. To save time, select recipes require, requiring different cooking methods. Having too many recipes requiring the same appliance, the oven for, for instance, will limit the number of dishes you can prepare at once. This is especially important when selecting make-ahead meals or for batch cooking. A good rule of thumb is to stick to one oven meal and a maximum of two stovetop meals at once. For example, loaded baked potatoes, a stir fry, and a soup. I don't know why you would be making loaded baked potatoes, but I guess those are just examples. Uh, then simply add meals that don't require cooking to the mix, such as sandwiches or salads. Uh, number three, organize your prep and cook times. A well thought out workflow will save you a lot of time in the kitchen. To best organize your prep and cook times, start with the recipe requiring the longest cook time. This is often the soup or oven meal. Once that meal is underway, focus on the rest. Reserve the cold meals for last since they easily can be made while the other meals are cooking. For extra time savings, double check the ingredients for all recipes before starting. This way, if two recipes require diced onions or julienne peppers, you'll be able to chop the total quantity at once. Using automated gadgets such as rice cooker or slow cooker can further streamline your workflow. Number four. <laughs> so too, what's up here? Number four, make a shopping list. Hey Amanda. Grocery shopping can grocery shopping can be a big time waster. To half the time you spend in the grocery store, keep a detailed grocery list organized by supermarket departments. This will prevent doubling back to a previously visited section and accelerate your shopping. Limiting grocery shopping to once a week and making use of grocery delivery services are two additional ways to spend less time shopping. Next, you want to pick the right storage containers. Um, some different ones here, um, uh, airtight containers ready for, um, ready to cook ingredients, um, BPA free microwavable containers, freezer safe containers, leak proof, um, um, compartmentalized containers. If you don't know what those are, you can look them up. Pretty much just get some Tupperware. Those are the best ways to, um, the best way to store stuff. Cooking, storing, and reheating foods safely. Um, cooking, storing, and rehe reheating foods at the right temperature can prevent food poisoning, which affects and uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, be mindful of proper temperatures. Make sure your refrigerator is kept at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I don't know. All this is all this is kind of common sense. Make sure you don't keep foods that you shouldn't in the fridge for too long. Just crap like that. All right, so steps to a successful meal prep. Below you'll find a simple um, step to step guide. Da, da, da. So number one is select your meal prep method of choice. Number two, stick to a schedule. 
Number three, pick the right number of meals. So before you start meal prepping, make sure that you have in your head ahead of time how many meals you're going to make. You don't want to make too many because then they'll go bad. You don't want to make too few because then you won't have enough food. Once again, kind of common sense, but we're going over this stuff because, uh, because it's a beginner's guide, obviously. <laughs> What's up, Barbara? Uh, number four, select the right recipes. Number five, reduce the time you spend grocery shopping. Number six, spend less time in the kitchen so you don't get burnt out. Number seven, store your meals properly. Okay. Now, this takes time. Um, and this is a habit that you need to instill in yourself. So don't expect the change to happen overnight. Don't beat yourself up if you miss a week or two. Just get back on track. That's the biggest thing. Don't beat yourself up if you lose track of what you're doing and you get off track. Just hop back on track. That's it. So the bottom line of what we just read. Meal prepping is great for people who want to spend less time in the kitchen. It can also promote nutrient-rich, healthy meals and discourage less nutritious fast food options. Depending on your goals, schedule, and meal preferences, meal prepping may involve making large batches to be frozen, full meals that need to be refrigerated, or prepared ingredients to be combined as needed. Maybe start with breakfast first and then add another meal. That's a good, that's a good advice, Karen. Find a method that works for you and pick one day per week to meal plan, shop, and cook. And that is it. That is the beginner's guide to meal prepping. It all seems common sense, but, you know, to a lot of people it might not be. And once again, this comes down to structure and it comes down to planning. Very important if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to eat healthier. All right. If you're looking for the article, I'll link it below. And that is about it. Anybody have any questions before I leave? Um, if you like this and other stuff, you can go to my Facebook page. It's Optimal Fitness 2, or it's uh, facebook.com at Optimal Fitness 2. Um, and if you like my page, then you'll see more of this stuff. Um, if you have any other questions, you can always email me, TSC Personal Training 2 at gmail.com, or you can go to my website here and contact me, the uh, Optimal Fitness Stuff Fit. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll try to do this again Monday. I'm kind of testing out different stuff to see what uh, works better. I'm pretty sure no one noticed the the um, the cam. I didn't have the green screen behind me because it's a pain in the ass to set up. Anyways, thank you guys.